if you want to start with music production and have absolutely no idea where to start, let me help you in this video. I will give you a quick overview as an introduction to music production, so music production one-on-one -on -one or music production for beginners. I first start with some gear you might need for music production and then I dive into my music production software and show you the first steps of making a song. If you want, you can follow along with the free version of Studio One. I will put the download link in the description below, where you can also find all the timestamps of this video. For more music production tutorials for beginners, subscribe and hit the bell. To start, you need a couple of things. Number one, you need a computer less than 10 years old, preferably less than three years old. The more recent your computer is and more powerful it is, the more convenient it is, because music production software is pretty heavy on the computer. This can be a Mac or a PC. A proper music production computer will cost you at least 1500 to 3000 bucks, but I suggest you try and see if you can manage with your current computer and and then later down the line, if you're more serious about music production, you can buy a new, more powerful computer. I don't want to expand much in this video about computers for music production. I made a special video about that. I will link it up in the description below. Number two, music production software. And music production software is called a DAW, a digital audio workstation. There are three DAWs on the market and I suggest you start out with one of them. The problem is that there are major downsides to almost every free door because they want you to upgrade to their paid versions. I suggest you check out at least my video I did about the topic. I reviewed 18 free doors. The link to that video is in the description below. If you want to go the more serious route immediately, then I suggest you check out a commercial door. The biggest doors that I would recommend are FL Studio, Logic, Ableton Live and Studio One. Most of them have free trial versions. Commercial DAWs vary immensely in price from 200 to 600 bucks. But the price is absolutely no measurement for quality or feature set. Logic, for example, is 200 bucks, but it does about the same and it sounds about the same as Ableton Live, which is 600 bucks. I also made a video about commercial doors. Guess three times where you can find it in the description below. Later in this video, I will open my door and show you the basics on how to make a song. So stick around for that. Number three, a good pair of headphones or monitor speakers, especially laptop speakers are extremely bad. You will miss frequencies below 50 Hertz and the frequencies are not spread out equally over the frequency spectrum. They dip in some places and they boost in others. So not ideal for music production. A pair of decent speakers will cost you about 200 bucks a speaker and a pair of decent headphones for beginners, well, 150 to 200 bucks. For mixing and getting the volume levels right, Headphones are not the way to go. They represent your sound in a different way than monitor speakers, for example. They are useful if you want to produce at 11 p.m. and don't want to, you to disturb the neighbors and are useful to make a melody, for example. In my video about music production equipment, I'll dive deeper into the headphone and speaker thing. Uh, and I answer, for example, the question, do you need a MIDI keyboard? The link is in the description. Number four, a sound card. A sound card, by the way, is completely optional for beginners. Most monitor speakers have a jack connection and only a sound card can provide that connection for you. But my uh, Renoi Tannoy Reveal speakers have a mini jack connection so I can connect them to my laptop or my computer directly, but that's absolutely not standard. I use a sound card though for better sound quality, lower latency, I can connect a professional microphone and I am a little bit addicted to the physical volume knob. More about sound cards and my advice on which sound card to choose. I made a special video about it. <laughs> Number five, you absolutely need sounds to produce with. You can download so-called sample packs, which contains samples like a kick, snare, hi-hat, for example. You can download these sample packs from beatport.com, for example. 
uh, but a lot of famous DJs have sample packs too. The problem is with most sample packs that there are 500 samples in that sample pack, which are only five of them are usable. The website splice.com has a subscription model for samples. You can download X amount of samples for less than 10 bucks a month. You can preview those samples and only download the samples you need. Some sample packs have also drum loops. Especially for a beginner, drum loops are really handy because those are a pre-programmed portion of drums of four or eight beats. And drag and drop them into your music and your music sounds instantly 100% better. This is very handy for a beginner and if you advance with music production you can program your own drums. Some doors like Logic and Studio One for example come with pre-packed loops. In a minute I'll show you how to use such a pre-packed loop in Studio One. Number six, plugins. You can extend the functionality of your door by using extra software. That extra software is called a plugin. There are different kinds of plugins. There are most famous are effect plugins like reverb, for example, or instrument plugins like synthesizers, for example. A lot of DAWs have basic plugins already included. You can also pay and download third party plugins. And this is where the magic happens. And this is where you get your good sound. Most famous plugins are the effect plugins from FabFilter, for example, the Pro Q Equalizer, the Pro C Compressor, the Pro R Reverberator, and the Pro L Limiter. Or synthesizers like, like Axford Records, Serum, Leonard Digitals, Silent One, Spire by Reveal Sound. Nexus by ReFX and Massive by Native Instruments. You might have guessed it, I made a video about that. Yay! My top 10 favorite plugins. Of course, you can find it in the description below. Okay, enough talking, let's dive into music production software. I use Studio One Professional, but you can follow along with the free version of Studio One that is called Studio One Prime. I will put a download link in the description below. Let's make a really simple melody. Um, when you start Studio One, you will get the start screen and to create a new song, click on create a new song. Uh, it asks me uh, which um, uh, details I want to have, um, my song name in this case, and I choose Slagroom met Augurken. Don't worry about these settings. Probably you will have over here 44.1 kilohertz. I'm recording now, so I need to uh, have 48 kilohertz. <coughs> uh, 128 BPM, that's okay for now. So then I click OK. Now we have the song screen, so we can create a new song over here. Um, over here is the uh, timeline and I want to create a new, uh, a new melody line. I start with the chords. I find that the most easiest because if I have some height of chords, then I can uh, fantasize my melody around that. So I'm gonna to, uh, going to create a new track. And when I click on the plus icon over here, I can create a new track. Uh, what should I call it? I should call it chords. Uh, I only want to create one track and I want to create an instrument track. There are two kinds of tracks in Studio One, a audio track and an instrument track. With an instrument track you can program notes and you can use synthesizers and with an audio track you only have uh, audio, pre-recorded audio. Um, I want to make my own melody, so I choose instrument. By the way, don't worry about automation and folder, that's something for another video. Instrument, I click OK. Now I have an instrument and I can program notes, but uh, it, it won't, uh, you won't hear anything because I don't have an instrument assigned to it. On the right side of the screen, if you don't have this window, by the way, then click on browse over here. Uh, on the right screen, over here you have instruments, effects, loops, etc. Uh, choose tab sheet instruments and go to search over here and I search for a piano. I always use the piano because a piano is the most basic instruments. You can really hear the pitch of the notes really well. 
And if you have fancy effects or fancy instruments, that can be a little bit hard or harder to hear what the pitch of a note is. When I start with piano, I can later choose another sound. So piano, and I choose one of the presets over here. Um, brrr, I choose grand piano. Now I'm going to drag and drop that onto my instrument track. And now I have my piano over here. Don't worry about the screen that is over here. You can tweak the parameters of, uh, of, the, of the synthesizer. Uh, it's a sample-based synthesizer, so there is used real samples in this synthesizer, so that makes it a little bit sound a little bit better. For now, I click on close, and I'm going to double-click on this track, double-click, and now it will create a MIDI event for me. You don't see anything because there's nothing programmed into that MIDI event. When I double-click on this MIDI event, my piano rule will show up at the, on the bottom of the screen. And now I have my notes over here. I'm going to record a chord progression. I'm not going to do that on one bar, I'm going to do that on four bars. So on the top of the screen I extend this part. Now I can program in notes by double clicking on a note. And now I can extend it and now I have one note in my piano roll. I'm going to choose, before I continue, I go, I'm going to choose a key for my song and I can program a key into Studio One by clicking on the bottom over here. I choose D minor, where are you? D minor. This will do nothing or it doesn't convert uh, notes or so to, uh, to your key, but it has some default settings. For example, over here, it is automatically set to uh, D natural minor. This, with this, you can skill quantize your notes. That can be easy to know if you don't know on the top of your head, D minor uh, has that a C in it or C sharp. Uh, then you can use the skill quantizer by checking this checkbox. And now when I drag notes around, you'll see it skips the notes that are not in the key of D minor. And when I check this, then you'll see I can choose every note. I check this because I want to make notes, a chord progression in the key of D minor. Dun. Um, I'm going to press Alt on my keyboard and drag uh, the note to the next bar. Um, and okay, I press 1 on the keyboard that will make my cursor go back to the, uh, to the first part of the track. And I press spacebar. Okay, I'm going to enable the uh, loop feature and I can do that by clicking on the upper part over here and then you will see it displays a mark and I will drag that over here. Now this is the region that is looped, but it isn't enabled yet, so it doesn't work. When I click over here, then it will enable the loop and you'll see this will go blue. When I press one again on my keyboard, press the space bar. Okay, that's gonna be my chord progression. I'm gonna um, duplicate this note by pressing Alt on my keyboard and I'm gonna count to seven because seven semitones up will or down 
uh, will always sound good. I'm gonna disable this because otherwise it skips notes and that makes counting a lot di more difficult. So, old key and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm gonna do the same thing over here. One, oh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I'm gonna do the same thing over here. Oh, one, two, well, ah! <laughs> two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I'm going to do the same thing over here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. Um, now I want to have a note in between because chords mm, generally consist of three notes. And that's one, two, three, one, two, three, or four, depending on if it's a major or a minor chord, press one. See, this is a minor chord, this is a major chord. That's too happy. No. Same thing over here. Okay, for now, uh, that's just fine. Now I'm gonna think of a melody that would really fit, would really fit very well. So I'm gonna create a new track, click on the plus over here. Again, same screen, but now I'm gonna make a melody. By the way, you don't have to choose track names, but when you advance with your music, it's really handy to have proper track names that makes uh, coming back to a song in two or three months a whole lot easier. Again, an instrument track. Okay. And the same trick again. Double click. And... Um, now I have to come up with a melody. I find it easier to have the chords below and my melody track up so I can drag my track to the track above. So now here's melody, now here is chords. Now in my head I try to come up with a melody a little bit. I don't have to keep to that melody exactly but... <laughs> um, I can always start on a D because my chord below here started on a D, so I know that a D, um, when it comes to melody, always sound right. Um, and now I just drag some notes here. Oh, by the way, we don't have a uh, sound assigned to the MIDI track yet, so when I play this, you will hear nothing so i do i do the same we have still piano over here but you're free to choose another sound again i would recommend piano a uh, grand piano over here and i drag that also to my melody over here and let it go and again this synthesizer window will pop up and i have a sound i close this window close and now i will have sound hopefully yes Do, da, do, do, da, do. Oh, do, da, do. Do, da, do, do. Do, da, do, do, do. No, no, no. Da, 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 
I have to repeat certain rhythm parts of a melody that makes it a little more recognizable. Otherwise, it, it sounds a little bit like a toddler that is banging on the keyboard. Low, up, lower. Um, uh, yeah, low, up, low. There, there needs to be a certain kind of flow in a melody. You see, short, short, short. Now this needs to be longer. Clips a little bit. me this nags me one bar to go um, this is the fourth bar melodies usually contain four uh, beats in a bar and uh, or eight but mostly when it's eight beats in a bar um, no, not eight beats in a bar, <laughs> two bars of four beats, then uh, there is a certain kind of repetition that ends in a little bit different way. Something is not right here. Ah. Maybe we can make this a, oh, a sliding mirrors as a fun little. Now let's add a drum pattern and there are loops in Studio One and to be honest, I don't know if the prime version, the free version of Studio One has these loops included, but if you have the pro version, then definitely it is. This makes making a drum pattern really easy because there are some pre-recorded drum patterns in Studio One. Uh, click on loops over here and over here is the EDM section drums. And here are full loops. Yeah, I like this one. So I'm gonna 
drag this loop. Oh, by the way, you can preview your loop by clicking over here. And if this icon is enabled, then if here is a 128 BPM, that is the BPM, that 128, that will automatically synchronize with the 128 BPM of your, of your song. Now, in this case, uh, 128 BPM is the loop and my song is also 128 BPM. If you, you had a slower song or a quicker song, um, then this will make sure that your loop is automatically synchronized with the tempo of your of your song. Um, okay, uh, I want to use this loop, so I'm gonna drag that to my track, and you will see now when I drag it over here. This you can't do, but when I drag it over here and I release it, you will see it will automatically create a new track for me. The you can see really good the difference between a instrument track and a audio track because in the audio track you see the audio waveforms. You can recognize a certain kind of track on the icon before the track. This is a piano and this is a waveform. I want to repeat this, this so I'm going to um, click this, hold Alt on my keyboard and drag this to the right, and now I have duplicated the track. The other way, by the way, in Studio One, I press Delete now on my keyboard, is select this, press D, and now it will duplicate that part of the track. I press one, enter. The next step would be, would be to expand this loop with effects, uh, etc. Um, then make another loop or maybe two or three and look what, what sounds the best. Then we can arrange a song. And with arrangement, you make a difference between uh, the intro, the break, uh, the build up, the drop, uh, break, build up, drop, and outro. By the way, I made a special video on YouTube. I will link it up in the description below where I explain how, to, uh, how a song is structured. The next step would be make hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of songs. And with every single song, you learn something new. And I still learn every single day something new. If you'd like to get a quick start with music production, check out my step-by-step -step music production course for beginners. Go to dexterclark.com courses or click on the link here in the screen or in the description below.